Now we're going to learn how to create a frequency distribution in SPSS. For this exercise, we will be using the statsclass.sav file. Put that file on your desktop and open up SPSS. Pause the video if you need to. When you are ready, here is what we're going to do. First, we're going to create a frequency table for an ordinal variable. Next, we're going to create a histogram for a scale variable. Remember that there are two ways that we can serve up our raw data, pictures and numbers. We will create a frequency table as a numeric display, then we will create a histogram as a graphic display. And this exercise will illustrate both. So here we are in SPSS, and we're ready to start our first analysis. We always do our analyses with the Analyze menu, so choose Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and Frequencies. Once the Frequencies dialog box pops up, we're ready to move variables from the variable list into the variables box. We're going to use the variable labeled as class, which if you want to see the name of the variable, you can find by right-clicking on the PC or control-clicking on the Mac and choose Show or Display Variable Labels. We're interested in this variable. What is your year in school or class? Let's move that into the variables box by clicking on this arrow in between the two boxes. Now that we've told SPSS what variable to use, let's tell it what to do with this variable. So click on Format, and let's be sure to order our output by descending values. Now we can click Continue. Before we click OK, let me point out that Display Frequency Tables is checked by default. If we wanted to calculate some statistics, like mean, median, and mode, we would get to those through the Statistics menu option. So for instance, mean, median, mode, skewness and kurtosis, minimum, maximum, and range, all available through this dialog box. But we're not interested in those. All we want is a frequency table, so click OK. And there is our output. What we see is there were 112 respondents, so our N equals 112. We see that same number down here, 112. We see that there were 19 seniors, 67 juniors. We see the percentage, the valid percent, and the cumulative percent. Now let me point out two things. The first is about percent versus valid percent. In the case such as this, where we have no missing values, then percent and valid percent are going to be exactly the same. In the case where we have missing values, percent is going to be based upon the total number of cases, including missing values, and valid percent will be based upon only those who answered this question. So, as a good rule, use valid percent instead of percent when you are interpreting your data. The second thing that you need to know is that these data are not the same as the frequency table that we created earlier. You'll notice there's nothing in here about cumulative frequency. There's cumulative percent, but that's not what we learned about. There's nothing in here about percentiles. Cumulative percent is not the same as a percentile. If you were going to use these data to create a frequency table such as what we did in class, you could use senior, junior, sophomore, freshman. You could use the frequency values here. After that, you would create the rest of that frequency table on your own using the frequency values. So do not turn in raw SPSS output such as this, and expect that that's going to be the correct answer for your frequency table. This gives you what you need to create a frequency table, but the output is not the table itself. So now let's create a histogram for a scale variable. Let's go back to our Analyze menu, Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Frequencies, and the first thing that we should do is click Reset. That clears out everything that we have done so far. Let us right-click or control-click 
show variable labels. And the variable that we're interested in next is the standardized IQ score. Let's move that into the variables box. To create a histogram, we're going to use the charts menu. We want a histogram. And we also want to show the normal curve on the histogram, which we do by clicking on this box. Click Continue. OK. And notice that our output has been added below the output for the year in school data. We also get our frequency table. This is optional. We wouldn't have had to produce this because, as you can see, there's a lot of data there that doesn't help us that much. And there's our histogram. So do you think that these data are normally distributed? Look at the shape of that histogram. Tell me, do the data look normally distributed? They really kind of do. In fact, let's do one more thing. Let's go back to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Frequencies. This time, let's turn off Display Frequency Tables. And let's instead go to Statistics and choose Mean, Median, and Mode. Click Continue and OK. Here's our output. There's the same histogram as before, but look at the mean, median, and mode. Mean, median, and mode, 97.3, 97.3, 97.3. Are these data normally distributed? Yes. How do you know? Because the mean equals the median equals the mode. Now this is a very stylized and highly cleaned data set. And so here, the mean, median, and mode are pretty much the exact same number. However, in the real world, we might get numbers like a mean of 100, a median of 98, a mode of 97. Those are still really close. So the mean, median, and mode don't have to be exactly the same for the curve to still be normal, but they need to be sort of close. When the mean, median, and mode are approximately equal, you know that you have a normal curve, something that we can see in the shape of our histogram with that normal curve superimposed. Music